Excellent. Hey guys, welcome back to CES 2017 coverage here from Las Vegas, Nevada. I want to start off by thanking my sponsors for this event, Gigabyte Deep Pool as well as OCZ, a Toshiba company. Um, but Patriot has a whole new set of peripherals and accessories, mice, keyboards, headsets. I'm going to go down those real quick. And they have a new M.2 SSD, so we'll finish with that. Um, but this is the Viper series, Patriot Viper. They have Viper memory as well that goes along with it. But they have refreshed this series, especially with the headsets, to sort of unify the design across all of them and provide different units at different price points. So depending on how much cash you have, you can buy hopefully at least one of them. Uh, so let's start off with the headsets. This one right here is the 330, the V330, right? Yes, I got it right. Uh, the V330 headset, so this is a little bit more towards your entry level. There's no LEDs on this one or anything, but it does have a very nice housing. Uh, it's very comfortable to wear. I've worn this. It's fairly lightweight. Uh, the earphones themselves are actually, seems like semi-open. Uh, they do provide a little bit of sand da sound dampening outside, um, but you do get a little bit of that sort of in-your-head feel as well. Uh, it does have a flip-down boom mic. So you can fold that down and talk. And uh, what I really like is that it's got the uh, metal uh, connection points for the strap. So as you're adjusting it, uh, that won't break because metal is the best way to do that. Uh, it also has a nicely braided cable. And then uh, on the back of the ear cup here, you have a control for muting the microphone as well as, of course, your volume options. So there is the 330. Let's move up to the 361, V361. This is actually the successor to the V360, which is uh, there behind us. So this one, you get an upgrade to some LED lights on the sides. So as you can see there, lights up. Those are red. Uh, other than that, you have the majority of the same features that we had with the V330, uh, although with the controls on the back, you do have the, this base icon. It's like a little drum. So um, the base drivers in these are actually can, can give you a little bit, bit of a vibration feeling. And if you don't like that, you can flip that and turn it off. Uh, beyond that, the driver sizes are 40 millimeters, and there's 7.1 virtual surround sound as well. See, I'm getting cues from off camera from Stacy, who's very helpful. So uh, there's the V361. Next up, let's talk about this mouse right here. The mouses are all 500s, so this is the 530. Yes. Oh wow, I'm I'm on a roll here. Uh, so this is just a nice little optical mouse, RGB lighting, 4000 DPI sensor, uh, and then of course you have some profiles you can uh, program it with, and then you can easily switch between those uh, with the plus and minus buttons there on top, and of course RGB LED lighting, LED lighting is redundant, but I keep saying it, uh, and of course that's a, a very easy way to tell which profile you have set up there. Forward and uh, back buttons on the side, pretty cool design overall, Viper logo on the front. And there it is. All right, uh, let's talk about this keyboard here. This is the 700s. The keyboards are 700, so this is a 730. I'm still correct. Um, this one is using Kale uh, Brown switches. Um, so you can pop those off. They have the same type of uh, switch cap, so if you do want to switch the keycaps or something like that, you can. It is the same type of one that the Cherry uses. This one's a little bit more on the budget side. It does have a wrist rest that's fixed. I'm going to show you their other keyboard that uh, has a lot more additional features, but I do like the lighting options on this. There is no software control, so everything is controlled within the keyboard. You have a function button here, and you have a bunch of different effects that you can program uh, this with. So even though you have a single color uh, red LEDs going back there, there's a lot of cool effects that they've already programmed in. And uh, I thought it looked pretty nice. Uh, there is also, of course, a nice uh, braided cable. Uh, but I think if you guys are looking for a bit more features, uh, there's another version of this that we want to show you over there. So here's the Viper 770 keyboard. And this one looks pretty cool. I like the design on this. Uh, it's got sort of silver backing and black around. Uh, again, this is using kale switches. Uh, they are actually using uh, the red version of the kale switches because they got some requests for that. So they're trying to give the fans what they want. Um, all of the functions on this keyboard can be controlled when it comes to the lighting directly with the keyboard, but there's also a software suite, so uh, you can use that as well. I like the actual amount of function buttons that are available up here to control all of the lighting because, you know, if you have a keyboard that's RGB, I find when I use mine, like I set it to one thing, and then I just keep using that over and over again. I'm like, I'm not really using the diversity of the 16.8 million colors or whatever. So having a bunch of different buttons that you can easily just switch between whatever profile suits your fancy uh, is a nice way to do that. There's also a detachable wrist rest here at the bottom. And when you pop that off, there's actually a, magnet, a magnetic connector that will hold it in place. And this also has an RGB bar that goes across this. Uh, this one isn't programmable. It'll just give you that nice rainbow uh, flow across the entire thing. 
More function buttons over here in the top right. Media controls, so uh, forward and back, play, pause, all that good stuff. And then a roller here for the volume, which is uh, it's the best way to do volume um, on a keyboard. Uh, the other things that this has are a pass-through for the headphones on the right side, a pass-through for USB on the left side, and again, a very nicely braided cable. Let's move over to the headsets. Um, I was on a roll, but I missed this one. This is the 370. Uh, so this kind of falls in line with this highest end, the uh, 770 for the keyboard, the 370 for this, and then the mouse down here is the 570. Uh, so this one upgrades you to uh, RGB on the sides. So for the LEDs on the sides of that, you can adjust the RGB lighting. Uh, and then you also have, again, that base switch on the side. Uh, very nice construction, pretty lightweight uh, overall. and. I didn't mention this for the 361, but for the 361 and the 370, uh, you do have the option of swapping out the ear cups. So it comes with sort of a, a faux leather option, and then they're giving you a cloth option too, which I find is very nice to have, especially if, you're, if it's warm and like you sweat, like uh, the cloth is way better uh, than the leather. Finally, for the peripherals, we have the mouse here. This is the 570. This one has a very unique design. It's, it's fairly colorful. You get red buttons along here. Uh, a series of red buttons here that it would be more geared towards maybe like a, if you're doing MMO or something like that and you need, need lots of different buttons. But also for FPS players up there, there is a sniper button up here that'll reduce uh, the DPI on the mouse to about 400 so you can you know, get that nice steady sniper shot. Uh, RGB lighting, if you didn't already notice, all the way across on the scroll wheel as well as the Viper accent as well as sort of a little line across the bottom. Uh, very nice feel and scroll wheel here. It's a bit of a rubberized texture on the top. And then, of course, you can um, change between different profiles with these buttons here. And there's actually different colors as well as uh, four different options for the profiles that are loaded in there. All these little buttons on here are programmable, which is cool. Uh, and then this one has an Avago uh, laser sensor on the bottom, 12,000 DPI, although no one needs that much DPI, but it's there anyway. Uh, and then this also has a weight system built into it. So you just pop off the little, this little piece. And then you have a set of seven weights, I'm sorry, six weights in there that you, you can install. Uh, and then you also get a little case to hold your weights because you, know, you don't want to just be carrying those around in your pocket or anything like that. And lastly, uh, since I really like fast SSDs and I really like M.2 NVMe SSDs, Patriot has one here as well. It's called the Hellfire. They have it installed in this system right under here. This is actually a, an Aorus motherboard by Gigabyte. Actually, this is the Z270 Gaming 7, if I'm not mistaken, which I have worked with. Uh, anyway, the read and write speeds on this thing, 3,000 megabytes per second reads, 2,400 megabytes per second writes. That's really fast. I mean, even for an M.2 NVMe drive, that's really fast. It's very small. It's got a black PCB as well. The sticker is all white. I don't know. This, this sticker is not the prettiest, but you could peel that off if you really wanted to. Um, but yeah, a, a, a very nice option. And that's available right now if, if you want a really fast M.2 drive. And then all the peripherals that they have around here, uh, we're expecting those in Q2. So uh, April, May, June time frame, you can expect to find those for sale at reputable retailers across the world. Well, not the world, at least North America and, and other places like that. And Germany soon too, right? Germany soon. Germany soon. Hey, any, all you Germans out there, get excited for your Patriot products coming soon. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. This has been Patriot Memory here at CES 2017. Again, a big thanks to my sponsors for this event coverage. Gigabyte, OCZ, a Toshiba company, as well as Deep Cool. Thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out and uh, comment all the comments down in the comment section down below. We'll see you soon.